this is on graphing quadratic functions. Um, the shape of these um, is also known as a parabola. Okay, this should be somewhat familiar to you. You should have covered parabolas in your mathematical history, but I know that doesn't all stay fresh. So I'm going to go over some examples to help you. A um, few things about a parabola, its basic shape looks something like this. Not exact, because I'm not a great artist. You could have a parabola that appears like this. We could also have a parabola that opens down. Okay, so those are the two possibilities, as far, at least as far as this lesson goes. Um, the other thing we want to talk about is this very important part of a parabola where it changes direction, okay, from down to up, um, and that is called the vertex of the parabola. Off, very important part there, okay. To notice for this one, it would be here. Okay, another thing you're going to be asked about is the axis of symmetry. Now, the axis of symmetry doesn't actually show up when we graph a parabola, but it is an important thing. It is the symmetry line for the parabola. Um, it's the reflecting line for the parabola, however you want to say that. It cuts the parabola perfectly in half. Okay, and it's important to help us to graph. Um, it's also important for other reasons when you get more specifically into parabolas. Okay, so here is our basic parabola. Let's talk about, notice we have two different forms that we can write the equation in. Um, depending on which book you're in, they will use different lingo to describe what they are. Okay, um, we have it written out ax squared plus bx plus c. We also have this form here, which some call standard form, some call it vertex form because it has the vertex right there in it. Let's talk about the different parts and pieces we have. Um, we'll talk about this form of the quadratic equation, or excuse me, quadratic function here, ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, it's really pretty nifty to find the vertex. We can use the same formula every time. We do negative b over 2 times a to find the x value of our vertex. So in this case, we do negative of negative 4 over 2 times 2. That gives us a positive 4 over positive 4, or 1. So the x coordinate of our vertex is 1. To find the y coordinate, you plug that back into your original function. So we would do 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 3. Be very careful with your order of operations. Remember squaring comes before multiplication. So we square the 1. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, 2. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So we have 2 minus 4 plus 3. Okay. What do we get from that? I'm getting a 1. So our vertex is at 1. Is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? There's a super easy way to tell. A, the number in front of x squared, if it is a negative number, okay, that means that our, our parabola is going to open down. When it opens down, notice we have a peak at our vertex, so that would be a maximum. If your A is positive, greater than zero, that means you're going to have a big old smiley face, positive person, you're going to open up and your vertex will be a minimum because it's the low point on the graph. To find x-intercepts, okay, to find x-intercepts, we set the function equal to zero, okay? X-intercepts happen when f of x is equal to zero or your y is equal to zero. So to find x-intercepts, here's what we do. We set the function equal to zero and we solve for x. Now, for this problem in particular, we would try to factor that, but it doesn't factor, and your only other option, other than completing the square, would be to use the quadratic formula and see if you can get some solutions there. Again, the quadratic formula, I'll write it up here at the top, is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac <laughs> all over 2a. You're going to need to know that. We'll use it again and again. 
Um, let's go ahead and try that. Um, so we have negative of negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times our a was 2 times 3 all over 2 times 2. We simplify the portion under the radical. We get 16 minus 4 times negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. Oh, we'll see what that does for us. That makes it <laughs> easy for us to tell what our x-intercepts are. So hopefully you notice that gives us a negative number under the radical. It leaves us with 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 over 4. We cannot have any imaginary x-intercepts. They have to be real numbers. So this has no x-intercepts because there were no real solutions to the equation. Um, Y-intercept, <laughs> to find the Y-intercepts is a bit easier. You put 0 in for all of your X values. Okay, so give us 0 minus 0 plus 3, or 3. Now in this form of the equation, your Y-intercept is going to be this number added on the end, only if it's in this form, however. So our y-intercept is where x is 0 and y is 3. The axis of symmetry is always going to be the line x equals the x-coordinate of your vertex, or negative b over 2a. So in this case, as we found up above, that would be the line x equals 1. We could draw a picture of this parabola given our information that we found. We know that our vertex is at 1, 1. We know we have a y-intercept at 3, 0, and that's enough points to draw this parabola, believe it or not. Going from the vertex through the y-intercept, that gives us half of our parabola. The other half has to look exactly the same, so we can get a good sketch. All right, over here we have our vertex form. Some people call it standard form for others. The vertex, when it's in this form, is h, k. Now notice here I have minus h and a positive k. The h is the x coordinate of your vertex. It's the part that's with the x. The y coordinate is the part that's with the y. The only trick here is make sure you change the sign for the x. So my vertex here, instead of positive 1, is going to be at negative 1 negative 4. You don't change the k, you just change the h's sign. So my vertex, that's why this is a good form to have. You can just write down the vertex, no math involved. Is it a maximum or a minimum? Same rule here, we look at the a in the front. If it's negative, we have something that opens down. If it's a positive, we have something open up. This is negative. So it opens down and gives us a maximum value. Okay. Next, x-intercepts. So to find x-intercepts, again, what you want to do is put f of x equal to 0. So 0 equals negative 3 times x plus 1 squared minus 4. And you want to solve for x. Um, our our steps here are going to be as different from the other side because our form is different. So what we want to do when you have it in this form to solve is you want to isolate the parentheses. So we would add 4 to both sides. We get 4 equals negative 3 times x plus 1 squared. Divide both sides by negative 3. Again, we're trying to isolate here. And we get negative 4 thirds is equal to x plus 1 Squared. Now what happens here, I take the square root of both sides to remove the x squared and put plus or minus. However, notice here I have a negative root. I can't do a negative root because that's an imaginary or complex number. We can't graph those on a xy axis. Therefore, this also has no x-intercepts because I could not get a real solution to 0 equals my function. The y-intercept, again, is fairly easy to find as long as you're very careful with your math. Okay, um, We want to do just 
go ahead and put zero in for your x value and then very carefully evaluate it. So zero plus one would be one. Make sure you follow the order of operations. Okay, one squared is one times three is three. Excuse me, times negative three. That's pretty important. <laughs> Be careful. One squared is one times negative three is negative three minus four gives me negative seven. So my y-intercept is at the point where x is zero and y is negative seven. The last thing is the axis of symmetry, which again is x equals the x-coordinate for my vertex, which was negative one. Okay. I could also draw a sketch of this graph, given that information we just discovered. My x and y axis. We found that our vertex was at negative 1, negative 4. I have a y-intercept at 0, negative 7. If I go from the vertex through the y-intercept, that gives me a picture half of my parabola. The other half should look exactly the same. Okay, you have to do that carefully because some people get the symmetry wrong. But that would be a picture of our parabola.